Hello folks, it's James here and welcome to the Movie Mad channel. Uh, welcome to the weekly watches. Uh, this is my third week of doing this. I say I'm stealing Roy's idea and doing the weekly watches. And I think it's quite a good idea to do this because if you want to talk about films, you should watch it, you know, do them when you're they're fresh in your mind. Well, as fresh as they can be in my mind because I do forget a lot of stuff. So I did try and do like a, a two weekly watches and I found that even then the memories of the movie started to fade and I was less articulate shall we say about it. Uh, so we'll start off with the weekly watches and the first one I did was I started this actually on Sunday night just after I filmed the last ones well Sunday morning so watch this on Sunday night and this was Invasion with Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman. Now, this is a Body Snatchers movie. I have seen... I don't want to say it's the original, because it's not the original. The one with Donald Sutherland isn't the original, is it? There's one before that. So I have seen the one with Donald Sutherland, and I have seen this one, and I actually quite like this one, and that's why I actually wanted to add it to the collection. And I actually watched it on Amazon Prime, and... When I seen that, I thought, that's actually a pretty good movie. I would like to add that into my collection. So I went on to CEX and had a look. And there happened to be one in Larry's store. And I asked him to pick it up for me, which he clingly did and posted to me. I'm trying to take the sticker off this case, but to be honest with you, the case is done. It's got a couple of more stickers underneath there, so I'm probably just going to replace that off. But let's talk a little bit about the film itself. Uh Nicole Kidman plays a psychologist and her boyfriend is a Daniel Craig is a medical professional and they discover there's something going on with her ex-husband and there's something not quite right about their behaviour and a few other people in our, our psychologist's office and it turns out there's an invasion of the body snatchers basically. And they have to figure their way through it. And I thought this was a pretty decent remake. I enjoyed it. And that is why I've added it to the collection. I wrote a couple of things down. A couple of facts about it. Just so you know. Directed by Oliver Hirschbeagle. I'm probably saying that right. It's got stars Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig. It's from 2007. And it's 99 minutes. And it was good enough for me to add it to the collection. So. Great. My next movie is actually another Daniel Craig movie and I realise I don't have it out so give me two secs I'm just gonna grab it. Here we go I'm back. So the next one I watched uh, now this is a repeat watch for me and I actually watched it on Amazon Prime. Why I watched it on Amazon Prime when I had the 4k I'm not quite sure I think it was late at night and that's probably my excuse. But I should have watched it on the 4K, which I haven't opened yet. So I managed to pick this up in HMV one time for 9 99 And out of the James Bond movies, I think Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig are my sort of era of James Bond movies. I've watched Sean Connery, I've watched a few of them, and they're pretty, I do like them. But for me, I just think this is just a spectacular film. I've seen someone say that they didn't really get on with this. I can't remember who it was. Ten movies that they didn't get on with. I'm really sorry, I forgot who it was. But I thought this was a perfect, gritty... I think I'm using the right word here, in visceral. Um, no, you mean, I think it means it's gritty, it's like actually... Somebody can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think this would you describe as a visceral film where he goes in and he's just not, you know, he's not playing a smooth, charming character. Well, he is in a way, but he's playing a deadly assassin, brutal assassin, in this. And out of all the out of all the Daniel Craig ones, I think this one's the best, followed closely by Skyfall, and then No Time to Die. No time to die. I did actually like that as well, but it was a great one. And it just like the bit where it, it so at the start he goes in 
and he go and he goes the first kill. And they would have sent a double O, and he goes the first kill. The first kill is difficult. The second one, he shoots something. Goes yes, considerably, and then he goes into the bar and goes. I wanna, you know, do you want a shake or something? Does it look like a give a damn? I just think that was a great twist on like the early development of Bond or Daniel Craig's Bond. And I'm glad I've got this in 4K so that I can pop it on whenever I want. It just happened to be on Amazon. I thought, I'm going to watch that. Also, Mags Mikkelsen, he plays a great villain in this, I think. It's directed by Martin Campbell. It's 144 minutes long. And I thought it was very good. And I still, I still think that. So that was... My second watch, which was Casino Royale. Now, here is where my poly folders come into play. Now, I, I was trying to stick this, this, this month with horror movies. So I thought, you know, I've watched Invasion, I've watched Casino Royale. It's time to go back to some horror movies. So I decided that I was going to watch, again on Amazon... The Cabin in the Woods. And I thought I'd seen this before. I think it was actually Cabin Fever I'd seen. And I hadn't seen this. And it was actually a real surprise for me. I really enjoyed it. And this is one of the ones that I do have in the Polly Pockets. In the cupboard there. So I don't know exactly where it is. But the, poly, the good thing about the Polly Pockets. I'll show you what I mean. Give me two seconds. See, I've got most movies that I haven't watched or I haven't got an affinity with in these poly pockets and then in a cupboard. And I've got like 300 of them stored like this. For example, The Experiment with Adrian Brody. I haven't watched that, but it's supposed to be pretty good. So I've just put it in a poly folder and you can get like seven or eight of these in the same shelf space as it is for one Brody. It keeps it nice and neat. And if I ever decide, you know, I really like that film. I can take it back out and I can put it on it back in a Blu-ray case or I can get rid of it or I can just keep it in the Polly Pockets because it doesn't take up much space. So I've got Cabin in the Woods in those Polly Pockets somewhere and that is one I might put back in to the Blu-ray cases because it was very good. It starts off as a typical, you know, retreat Cabin in the Woods but it turns into a deadly game. And the stars of it are Drew Goddard, oh sorry, the director's Drew Goddard, but there's Kirsten Connolly, who's the girl protagonist who's getting chased all over the place by these monsters, but these experimental monsters that they're sort of playing a game to prevent demons rising. You've got Chris Hemsworth in it, he plays a good good role as, as the, what would you say, the muscle, muscle with no brains in it. And then you've got Jesse Williams, who plays Avery in Grey's Anatomy, and he plays a more sensible character. And there's a reason for that at the end of the film. I won't spoil that for you, but I thought that was a really, really decent movie. Especially especially considering it's one I completely dismissed. So, you know, when you completely dismiss movies, probably not a good idea. So, what, el what else did I watch? Right. Next, I don't have, I don't own this. And again, I watched it on Amazon. It is Poltergeist, the remake, 2015. It's directed by Jill, Gil Kerrin. It stars Sam Rockwell, Rosemary DeWitt, and Kyle Callip. And he's the guy from the Underworld movies, the professor in the Underworld movies. And you recognise from it. And he plays a great character in this. And I really, I haven't, I had before this, I hadn't seen the original Poltergeist. But I thought this one was a very solid movie. It was creepy. It had lots of lots of things in it. So basically the story is a house takes a girl and they've got to get her back. But there's all spooky ways into that into the reasons why that's happening. And I thought it was a pretty decent film. I enjoyed it. I did. But then, since I'd watched the original, I decided... I would watch the original and Roy very kindly 
Yeah. What? I've just seen the originals, watch the original. Okay. Oh well. I'm just saying I watched the original and I watched it on this and on this disc here, which Roy kindly sent me for my birthday last year and I hadn't got around to it yet. And it is Poltergeist 4K. And I have to say, I think I enjoyed this one a little bit better. It had more story to it. It had more things happening. And I have, again, the picture on it, even you said the picture on this picture was in... On it was, uh, the picture compared, compared when I first watched it, wasn't it? Absolutely amazing. It was absolutely crystal clear and incredible. It stars Greg T. Nelson, and I'm kept on thinking, where have I seen him before? And he plays Mimo's boyfriend in Young Sheldon. I was like, that's where I've known him from, because he's, he's playing that. But the movie itself, I think, was better than the remake. It just had a bit more into a bit more story, a bit more things. But that's like you said, the remake was a decent attempt. I thought the remake was good. I think this is good as well. I just think that this one is a little bit better. You know, the story just was a little bit better. I'm getting my points across on that one. But the picture on that was absolutely amazing. So thank you to Roy for sending me that. What did I watch next? Again, this is one that I have relegated to the Polly Pockets. And it probably shouldn't be in there. Or should it? I'm going to rewatch it again. Again, I watched it on Amazon, but I do have it. And it is Paranormal Activity 2007. I watched this late at night, in the dark. Was it creepy? I did want to find out what happened at the end, but the end for me was a bit of a disappointment. I'm not going to ruin it for you if you've not seen it. But it's from 2007. It's 86 minutes. It's directed by Oren Pell. And it says the characters are the same as their names, Katie Pell and and Michael Slot. Basically, two people are being haunted by a ghost that's been haunting this girl since childhood and the boyfriend agitates it and things go wrong. It's like a found footage movie. We watched that when it first came out, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we found it good, didn't we? I thought we... I like that kind of thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I, th I think we found it good. And I still find it good today. So, but what did I take out of the Polly Pockets? Known I've got it there and I can get it any time I want. I can, but would I put it back in the main shelves? Maybe not. Maybe I will. Let's have a definitive answer. Am I going to? No. <laughs> right. So that was the invasion of the Casino Royale, Cabin in the Woods, both poltergeists. Paranormal Activity, so that's six. And the seventh movie, so I've done all right this week. I've watched seven movies. And I've been trying, I say, I've been trying to not do my YouTube scrolling. And I didn't do that as much this week. I actually put on the films. And the last one I watched was actually on Friday night. And it's a new movie called The Substance with Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley. Now, this horror movie is about people getting older and being found to be not as good as they were when they were young, you know, being dismissed because they're older, ageism, shall we say. And the this company play, plays on that and has a way to make a version of you that's younger, but in the most brutal way. And you have to share that existence with your younger self in a most disgusting, horrific way. And it does, shall we say, ask a lot of questions about whether you, you know, whether you would do this if that, if you, if you, if that were, if you were that person. Demi Moore plays a great character. There's a younger girl who plays 
a version of herself who's younger. And it is absolutely brutal. I found it a great, great movie. I really enjoyed it. And there is parts at the end which were quite weird. But I would thoroughly recommend the substance. I would watch that. I'd watch that. I think that is one I'm definitely going to add to my collection when it comes out. If it does get released on physical media, I'm presuming it will do. But it's a great body, I would call it a body horror. And the end, I'm not going to tell you about it. You should watch it just when you, when you get a chance. I would give that a go. So that is my weekly watches for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't got any comments about anything I've watched or if I could do this a bit better or if there's anything you want to, me to add, I'd appreciate it. I don't think a lot of people watched my weekly watches last week, last week but that's probably because it's only my third time of doing it. Maybe it's going to be a regular schedule. I'm going to try and do it every Sunday if I can. Might be the odd one that I miss, but for now, I'll leave you to the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.